science book and brought up with the pens, and she suggested a signature drink. So I had a dark time to make a raspberry and drink a soda, no alcohol. It's called oh, my Carolyn Carolyn, Carol. <laughs> which is why my sweetheart Chris called me. We would go to weddings, we'd push a cart, and we'd go by these ladies, and he'd say, excuse me, and my darling Carolyn, and my darling wife, and they'd look at him, and they'd look at me, and they'd say, you're, you're so lucky. I said, I know I'm blessed. He's a keeper, they said. And then we'd go to the border in Canada, and the guy said, what do you have to declare? And he said, my love for my darling wife. <laughs> and the guy would look at him and say, go on, go on. <laughs> it, was just, it was incredible. He was so confident and so full of love. I was extremely blessed. And so blessed to him and his family and friends. Um, and so then there's this, you're going to get the, oh, there's Mary. <laughs> Friendship settings and my story, and then the Kathy cartoon, which we all have a little humor. And then, um, and then I left out something in my story. And when I was talking to Marky, and she was telling me about the children's theater, and I thought, John, I left that out. I was in the children's theater as a kid, I was the king of the goblins. <laughs> and then, and also, I took elocution lessons, and my parents wanted me to be able to speak beautifully. And I learned you don't say ah, you say. You don't say aunt, you say aunt, because aunt crawls on the ground, and this is your aunt. So whenever I say aunt, people think I'm being, you know, whatever, but that's the way I learned it when I was a little kid. And you too, my, my cousin, and I've got to introduce everybody at that table. My cousin and Lee and Mike that flew in from California to be here. Isn't that amazing? She said her arms are tired. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you are, you are, I love you. So, um, my, I'm just looking for all my brilliant notes. My granddaughter's Rachel and Amanda. Rachel is amazing with her EMT and firefighting background. Like her grandfather, I know her side, plus his memory, and environmental work in Syracuse. And Amanda with her background in health care. And her mom, Jenny, our daughter, who's incredible with health care. And Gavin. Muscles and sports and very smart. Our great grandson. At four years old, he knew every single president and he knew everything about them. He's amazing. He's also a very tough Monopoly player. He's dangerous. We haven't played in a while, so we have to get a game. <laughs> you have to give me a break. Um, and then when I went to my cousin Lee, uh, who had flown in from California, she used to live on a farm. Now she's Oh, the mic, can you hear me? Uh oh. She used to live on a farm, and now she's in California. She's a California gal. But when she was on the farm, I learned how to ride a horse, milk a cow, feed the chickens, and what else did I learn? Not probably a lot more, but anyways. Do you remember that? I do. Okay, good. Um, all of my friends in the 1960s, except one from 1948, who's having surgery from her, so she couldn't come. From New Jersey, um, is, oh, this is not here. This is supposed to be here. It's my sweet 16 invitation from 19, whatever, 59 or something. It's up, it's up there. Okay. We were friends since 1948. She's my longest friend. But like she, she's New Jersey and she had surgery tomorrow, so she couldn't come. But she kept telling me, I have your invitation from your sweet 16. And she sent it to me a few days ago. I was like, oh my gosh. I have to tell you something to bore you. This is hysterical. I was 16 years old, and I had we had a luncheon, and then we had fellows come later to have dancing, and then we walked down East Avenue to the Bright and Bold. But I said to my parents, if I hold Paul's hand walking down East Avenue and wear lipstick, will I be a brace and hussy? <laughs> Jazz going. What happened to my chair? 
about sex at midnight. <laughs> and anyways, um, I need to find out what happened to that. Um, my friend's dad named Jeff from, from outside of Philadelphia are staying at my home because of socks. And, and, and I've known Debbie since, since she was born, and of course her parents. And then Mara Chain, Roberta, Gail, Lucy, Rick, Linda, did I forget anybody? Forget anybody? From, From the caregiver group. We really bonded and supported each other and got together for lunch every month, courtesy of Gail arranging at the um, Midwest Country Club. Did I forget anybody else? No, good, good, good. Another uh, Gail who had known since 1966 when I Speech language <coughs> hearing room was across from hers, her first grade class, and then another building. Her dear husband, Paul, bless his memory, had the same birthday as mine, passed away from LAS, which she may go into. And then um, Anne, who came from Marion's house, first loved her, and she loved, he loved it. Sharon, my hairdresser. Well, for 35 years. years. And, and actually, actually everybody, everybody here knew her except the ones who here, and they, they knew him through me. Yeah. Um, and, and then the, the game, game day friends, Fran and David, David, my buddy from 1968, and, 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 and their own speech and language, and then Greek Easter's and Christmas. Mary and Wayne, a lovely couple who I was fortunate to meet through Fran and David. Jay and Martha, Jay, my excellent contractor and friend. Louise and Don, friends from high school. And as I said, Louise got me the videographer. And Linda, who I met, received the financial because our husbands were in similar situations. Gail and Pat and Mary, my wonderful neighbors. Barbara, who I've known forever, and her dear husband, Marty, bless his memory, since 1963. Tom and Don, wonderful friends, and CPA extraordinaire. Rick and Joanne, landscapers who, who had the nerve to stop, but he gave me a nice guy. Um, Therese, who I met through our husbands at Brookdale. Plus David's memory, Barb and Mike, my, my game day buddy and speech and language. Jennifer, the vet, I don't see her, but she was invited because of socks. I don't know where she is. Annette, um, my skiing buddy. Kathy, my neighbors in my first apartment when I worked at RIT, and she taught me bridge.
We're wishing you health, happiness, and blessings. And we love you. toward the end of our career where we had to go in and study each other. So we had a group. There was Margie and Fran and Carolyn and myself. And we had to go to each other's buildings and watch us uh, teach. Well, <laughs> that was hysterical. I mean, when we're together, we do nothing but laugh. So what happens when we're all, when we're all trying to watch each other because they wanted us to do that for the city. I don't know if they did that anywhere. 
<laughs> anyway, happy birthday, my love. We love you dearly. We're glad we get together. And you're a riot and stop winning all the games. <laughs> I had the privilege of living across the hall from Miss Carolyn Singer when she was a world traveler. And in the 60s, 70s, a frightened little girl like me would never have thought of going to all the places that the lady across the hall went to so long. It was unheard of. And now, when she talks about it, she says, I met wonderful people. I would sit at a table and talk to people that I might not do if I were with a companion. And I thought, that is a life lesson right there. And ironically, our dear Hirsch, had the same quality. Because when they met, he said, I haven't talked to you yet. And so that was the beginning of their lifelong love story, which is indeed one for the ages. Also, I had the privilege of being at her wedding when my then the guy I lived with. <laughs> was their best man. And it was wonderful. It was intimate and small, but the love was palpable, really. And that's how they lived their life. And I think, again, it's one of the And so I am honored to say thank you, Carolyn, for that life class. I appreciate you. I mean, I